And hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, Paul here. Welcome and welcome back, I guess, to me. And uh, good seeing you, Stoney's here, so we get starts, <clears throat> which is awesome. Jan, what's up? Susan Wilson, Afroja. Hopefully, you guys aren't getting sick of me, but this is the last day, so I'm gonna get all choked up. Last day of the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Sort of creating brilliant images from images that are just like, they look dull because they're, you know, camera raw images. They might be kind of mm, okay, but I'm really gonna dive into camera raw today. So, oh, Judith, you're, you are too kind. But uh, yeah, it's been really fun, I would say overall. Uh, I've really enjoyed this, so. Uh, you can go to behance.net forward slash challenge forward slash Photoshop. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what's cool about uh, navigating to that site, that has sort of the archives as well of all the previous challenges that I want to get into. So I'm going to share my screen. Last challenge. My copy is so much better. Guess what? Hey, maybe maybe don't put a, a, you know months old expired creamer in your coffee. Maybe, maybe not do that. So that's what happened this morning. But you see all these lovely challenges that we've been through. Um, and again, as you scroll down, you can see the past challenges. So you can always kind of jump in and uh, check out uh, these past two weeks uh, sort of in the future as well. All right. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Create brilliant images and hand images to the full browns, either using iPad or desktop using Adobe Camera Raw. Click there to get started. Um, I wanted to also kind of like include there, um, I kind of wanted to Google this. Um, there's a site, HDR Images, uh, you know, HDR photos that you could download. So basically the raw format files of the raw format uh, from your camera uh, is supported throughout Photoshop and in Photoshop on the iPad. So you can find a number of examples out there, just so you know. Um, gosh, I wish I had that site. It's something like, H I don't know, HDR images. It's just a bunch of example of different file formats. Uh, this is a DNG file, just so you know. So that's what this is. When you get it, by the way, thank you everybody who's participated as well, by the way, right in here. Just appreciate you guys jumping in and uh, getting involved in the challenge. Nick Denno, this was one of my favorites. Using color harmonization was so cool. Look at that, Ted B, very cool. Theo, again, more flowers. Maria, everybody's been doing a great job. So I'm totally into it. And uh, also Joshua George has done an amazing job. All right, so once you download that file, again, notice that it is a, a DNG, right? We want to open that up in Photoshop. I will just click and drag this into Photoshop, right? And what's going to happen is it's like, hey, Photoshop doesn't open. It's actually Adobe Camera Raw. This is Adobe Camera Raw 14, right? 14.0.1. All right, that's what opened up. And it's like an entirely new interface. So if you are new to this, I know Sam isn't, because Sam knows a, a lot of stuff. Maybe, I don't know, Sam, you can tell me. Um, thank you for posting that link. Um, ooh, that's fun. Uh, ooh, you're caught up with all the challenges. By the way, thank you for bringing that up, Stoney. Uh, we want to ultimately turn these into a a Behance project when we're done. So this is our last one, we'll turn this into a Behance project. So just hit this auto button. So this is what it initially looks like, right? But this magic button, rather than me messing with all these sliders, right, just hit auto. Bam, brings it to life. So that's what I mean by sort of like a brilliant image, right? And then we can start to play with all of these dials as well. Um, Typically like texture, clarity, dehaze, right? We could really start to see that work in here as we kind of crank that up. Again, more texture gets added to the trees and the uh, different foliage, as you could see, as we crank that up, right? Gives it a lot more detail, clarity, things like that. Clarity does sort of almost make it look 
too much high contrast if you drag it too far. So uh, I think a common mistake most people make is they, they push everything to the limits. I do the same thing. Susan, uh, Dana, I don't know if you guys do this, but like as soon as you figure out or, or learn a new tool or technique, you crank it up to 11, right? When really as you get, uh, you know, further on, along in your career, you learn how to do these more subtle adjustments, right? Um, uh, where do you set that up? Open in camera raw. Uh, you don't have to set it up anywhere. Just drag it, just open it in Photoshop, any DNG, um, any, any raw file format from your camera, right? But I could show you how to get to this if you're in Photoshop and you want to manipulate an image as if it was a camera raw file. Okay, show you how to do that. So already this looks like a lot better. So we will crank up, well, let's take a look at a little bit more we could do. Vibrance and saturation. And again, jump in there, kind of crank that up a little bit more. I'm noticing I would still like some brightness, kind of like in this area, it's still kind of dark. Oh, so sorry for scrolling away. So uh, what I could do there is I could use a number of these tools off to the side. Okay. We have our different, and this is brand new by the way, like how this is done. We have masking, right? So right in here, we can actually add some masking to this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm probably gonna brush on it. So we'll zoom out, I'll select brush, and I automatically get these settings. Don't worry too much about the settings right now. What we wanna do is just kinda like paint over some of the parts we just kinda wanna brighten up, right? So I'm just painting, Painting a little more over here, right? And what it's doing is it's created that new mask, right? So that's all I'm doing. It's kind of getting this area. And maybe I could dabble in this area as well. Uh, notice how I have the flow just set to 43. So it's gonna build up to 100% as I paint more, okay? But that's what I wanna do, right? I just defined the selected area, okay? Um, I can turn that off by turning off show overlay, right? This is what the image looks like. So I typically turn off show overlay, that's right up here. Don't show the overlay. And now let me play with uh, all of the masking uh, properties like exposure. We can increase the exposure. See how it brightens it up? You can kind of brighten up that area just a little bit. Again, it's all about these fine adjustments. Um, and then maybe, I don't know, increase saturation, sure. So see what I just did there? It's like, okay, so I could still paint, even though I have a show overlay turned off, I could still paint. And maybe I will crank this up some more. What's nice about this is this is non-destructive. So maybe I do wanna kinda crank that exposure up to the highest it'll go. And lo look, it's, it's um, the flow, since I have the flow set to, I guess, like 16 now, I can slowly like build up to 100% basically. Again, just kind of painting right there. And again, I was just kind of showing you, showing me like just kind of painting in these different areas. So that's what you want to do, right? Kind of define those areas. Um, okay. Uh, uh, so, oh, good, good point, Anki. I was, your camera raw got you caught up in the possibilities of raw photos rather than letting the camera decide by making JPEG files. So yes, the camera is giving you all this like raw information, all that color data and detail and all that stuff is there. And you then get to decide like how you uh, like what you want to bring out basically, right? So that's what's going on and that's, yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's like you decide kind of what settings you want and what you want to do, right? So that's all I am doing there. Now, let's say for instance, we want to change the sky. Check this out. So we have that done. I'll just click on another tool, but I'm going to click back in here. I'm going to I'm gonna do a long press right up here. So we're going back into our masks. Ooh, geez, so sorry. I accidentally selected select subject. 
So let's undo that. But let's go up here. We'll do a long press. And these are basically the same settings that I saw in this panel. But in here I can say, hey, you know what, select sky. It's gonna go through and it's gonna select the sky. Now, if you notice right in here, we have our initial mask that I was playing with right here. And now we have mask two, which happens to be our sky, right? That I can call sky mask, right? So that's sort of the second mask that it automatically created. Again, turn off show overlay. And then from here, again, I can change the sky to any sort of setting because that blue is really vibrant. I'm kind of into it, but here I'm just playing with different settings. I notice if I dip more into the teal, I'm kind of into that more as well. So there's automatic select sky and select subject in this new Camera Raw 14, which is pretty darn awesome. Um, jumping on down, get all those fine adjustments. Hey, you're a pro, Marsha Grasset, you're not old. You're like, I'm old, I use Lightroom Classic. No, you just, you know how to deal with all the buttons and switches and sliders and all that stuff. Okay, so that's what, those are the changes I'm gonna make. Um, that, that's about it for now, because again, I just want to give this image some punch. Uh, remember, I can always go to the overall settings right in here, right? Just click on this top adjustment right here and then we were dealing with the basics and then you can get into the all the detail down here as well right so if you want to add some um, vignetting for instance we can jump in and give it a little bit of a vignette right so it's kind of darker on the edges makes it look nice oh it's interesting that i it looks like i took this photo I took this photo and I'm, I don't know, I'm getting some reflections. So did I do this outside of a window, right? So this is the stuff that I'd want to clean up. It's like, oh, what is up with that, Paul? What did you do? Well, we'll go ahead and take care of that also in Camera Raw. This little Band-Aid. Yeah, let's heal it. Sounds like a great idea. Now we'll go down here, zoom in, and we'll heal. Click and drag. This kind of takes us back to the very first day. Uh, I think I talked about Camera Raw. But here, Camera Raw, I love it. When I heal something, I get to define the um, sample point even after the fact. So I can move that up there, right, for this one. Let's grab that. Heck, let's grab that too, why not? It's gonna sample from that spot. All right, right down here. Let's take that. Yeah, sure, sample from over there, that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll go down there. It's a little darker, so that kind of works. This one might be a little bit more difficult, but let's try it. No, it actually works pretty well. Okay, so there that is, right? I usually click on another tool. We'll go ahead and let, make that go away. And then those issues I'm not really gonna worry about. Let's take a look at our before and now our after. So our before and our after does wonders, all right? Fantastic. Right over here, we can open as an object or open as a copy. That's what this flyout menu, or just do a straight open. We're gonna do the default, which I think was open as object. So it'll open it as a smart object right in here. It's camera raw, okay? So if I double click on it, I go back into those camera raw settings, okay? I could have even opened this up as a layer. So I'm gonna do one more thing that's pretty awesome. Uh, is it just me or does this absolutely blow your mind? Yeah, Ted, it blows my mind. I'm gonna rasterize this layer because I'm gonna blow your mind once more because we're all talking, we're talking about making brilliant images. That's what I wanna do, make them brilliant. And I love this feature. I love uh, high dynamic range images. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna go into layer and I'm gonna go to Oh wait, sorry, go into Image, Adjustments, right? And we're gonna go down here to HDR Toning. This is my favorite thing to do, HDR Toning. It's gonna say, hey, we need to flatten your image. I'm like, that's cool. It's one layer anyway, anyways. And this is what it does. So here's our before. So talk about making a brilliant image, before and then our after. Look at that, Shiva, shabam. Whoa, it's glorious, right? That's just the default, by the way. 
we'll come in here and we'll change and just play with these presets as a starting point. So we'll change this to, there's monochromatic, you know, this high contrast stuff is good. Photorealistic high contrast. Let's try that. Oh, so sorry I scrolled away. I should have connected my keyboard, but I had too many things to do. But this is the photorealistic high contrast. So the before and then the after. Problem with this is we really start to get this edge glow, right, which is right here. You can see that it's quite an edge glow. So you might wanna take that down a little bit so we don't have as much glow, but I like the detail that it adds, right? It does a lot with it. I don't know if you guys have these, but I also have some of my favorite. There's RC5 and Scott5. So let's go to uh, Scott5, right? Brilliant. A lot of detail, a lot of radius, and you get the idea. And let's go RD, RC5 as well. I don't know, what do you think? Am I doing too much? Is it too much? Is it too much? What do you think? Yeah, it does. It starts to look surrealistic. And that's why some of these are called surrealistic. Right? We'll actually pick the surrealistic one. Wow, that's that's a little much. So I kind of like the photorealistic high contrast, taking the radius and those glows down. I kinda I'm kinda leaning toward this, this sort of look. So I'll click OK. And there we have sort of this this image, which really adds a lot of, uh, I don't know, graininess. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Either way, it's all you. Too much depends on your goal. Thank you so much, James, because there are no right answers. It's all about what sort of context are we talking about, right? So we'll export this out, right? We have this done. Um, you might want to adjust the size because this is an HDR image, or excuse me, this is a, or it was originally a raw image, so it's going to be huge. So take that down to say a thousand pixels wide and export that out, you know, to your desktop, right? We've been posting to Discord, right? And ultimately we want to make a Behance page. So go out there, Behance, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But also I wanted to show you HDR, or excuse me, um, Camera Raw on the iPad, because this is brand new as well. So here we are. Jumping over, before we make our project, let's play with this on the iPad as well. So here we are. Um, I'm gonna go to Photos. I just airdropped this, the same photo. Right, opening that up in Photoshop on the iPad. So here I am, Photoshop on the iPad. Let's make this larger. Like so. And notice off to the side, you have that auto, right? Which actually is already selected. Auto, bam, there it is. All those sliders that we'd expect. Let's jump into the color. Maybe add some more saturation, some more vibrance, right? Into the, the effects, we added vignetting as well. And then let's get into the detail, right? So again, uh, sharp, increase the amount of detail, make it sharper. I'm just cranking everything up to 11 and uh, playing with any, any of these other effects that I want, right? So again, I'm playing with that, uh, you know, adding a little bit more light to it. Oh, that's too much. Um, and there we go. I have that set up. So here I can import this as a smart object or as a layer. So yes. On the iPad that supports Camera Raw. So now I'm in here. If I decide I want to paint on this, excuse me, supports smart objects. If I paint on a smart object, I love this. So let me just go in here and say, I want to do my like, you know, uh, healing brush, right? On that one spot down here. Let's make this size a little bit bigger. If I click, it'll do it but it adds a new layer. Do you see that? It adds that new layer off to the side, um, which is nice. Anyways, so I like how that works. So from there, you can export that out as well. I could post this, I could share this for comments, all that fun stuff. Um, 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rufus is like, hey, Paul, <laughs> next time you uh, take a take a photo, roll down your car window. How about that? <laughs> I 100% I agree. <laughs> You're exactly right. Just roll down your window. But then I'm like, what, what would I have to correct for my daily creative challenges? So, hey. <laughs> Oh, it's good stuff. All right. <laughs> so here we are again. Uh, ultimately, I'm going to share my work. So congratulations, whoever has completed all of these challenges. That's awesome. You want to turn this into a project by the time you're done. So go to project. Sure enough, here we are. And again, I talked about this on the very first day. So we're going to do this like complete loop. We could say uh, Photoshop daily creative challenge. And here I would put, um, you know, I would say November 2021, okay? So right in here, we'll select that text. We'll make it a header. We will center it, right? We'll do the same thing with this text too. Instead of making it header, it'll be paragraph. Write some more in here as well. You know, did this and it was really fun. You know, as much detail as you want, but probably what's most important is actually adding the work. So sure enough, insert media. So you can not only sit or insert one image at a time, you could select multiple images, which I love this photo grid, by the way. Click right here, and now we can add photos to create our grid, okay? So you, again, did nine challenges, add them all this way, right? Des desktop, I, I don't actually have them all, but look, geez. I don't have them all as JPEGs. Um, okay, well, let me just grab these three just to give you an idea. Again, should have exported them all out. You get the idea. I'm loading up all three of these. Three I did in one day, right? We were just playing with that text. And uh, you get what you get here. What's cool is you could always add, say, your favorite one, say, at the top, right up here. This is the one we just did. So we'll go to our desktop. That high, that's high dynamic range. DNG file right here. And then since I made this a DNG and all that good stuff, maybe underneath it, I might want to add some text. Uh, and even what I'd want to do in this case is show the before and after would be a good idea. Okay. So right down here camera tell people what you did hey camera raw sort of editing is what i would say one thing i didn't show about camera raw is you can add multiple masks right so as i was painting i could add as many brush strokes i could do a select subject all within that same mask but add a description right there you guys get the idea okay the cool thing is, is i'd highly encourage you to also link to the challenge let's jump in here shameless uh did this let's take that text right in here this is where we can link out Ugh. my keyboard right here throw in that link to that challenge right so if it's a specific video um yeah jump in there and add that link because all the videos are right in here as well so that's all uh Ooh, you've been adding yours and going back and replacing them. The cool thing is, and this is why I showed to kind of set this up on the first day, right? You don't actually even have to publish this. You could just save this as a draft. Like it's kind of a work in progress. Let's save it, right? And um, then publish it when you're ready. So that's gonna be filling in all of these fields just doing it what it says, right? Get some exposure for all of your hard work that you did. Uh, so yeah. You're on the new layer. Okay, cool. Try to brush the original layer. All right, just reading comments now. All right, cool. So save that as a draft. I, know, I get it. When you're done with a project, you just want to share it with the world. I'm the same way and I usually finish at like midnight. And, uh, you know, maybe that's not the best time to like share your work. So save it as a draft, wait till the morning, look at it with some fresh eyes, um, and then share it with the world uh, is what I'd suggest. So, um, and again, get into all these settings as well. 
Okay, so make it special, make it yours. Um, and yeah. Oh yeah, good call. Never post a hundred percent complete uh, until it's a hundred percent complete to be featured. Yeah, yeah, of course. And again, if you could include the before and afters, that's even better. So, uh, thanks so much. Like camera raw is so easy to work with. And uh, like what was mentioned earlier, if you do ever have an image, since I always wait to the very last minute to do this, like we could take, this is just, if you just have a layer, by the way, convert this to a smart object. We did this on day one. I wanted to make sure I was answering all questions. You can get to camera raw this way as well. Camera raw filter. I did this on the very first day, boom. And now you're back into all of those lovely settings as well. So thanks so much. I like thoroughly enjoyed uh, this daily creative challenges like it's really fun for me being a social person to hang out with you guys so Thanks so much, and I'll see you very soon. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks so much. See ya